Welcome to Verbal Pick Radio, where we give you a verbal image of life, and we are everyday people. Like, what we are to the show. Look, it's wild out there, y'all. Um, people are gathering at Washington, D.C., getting ready for, I mean, it's Trump supporters, getting ready for a protest. Some uh, are saying that it's going to be violence. Uh, they're trying to get, get your President Trump to cool out. Uh, but we all know that Trump is moving full steam ahead. He's still trying to say that he won the election, and he's still trying to overturn the election. Now, we're going to explain to you why he's pinpointing an election official by the name of Ruby Freeman. Now, the name Freeman came to slaves who had recently purchased their freedom, or if they were Moors, If you go back and research the 1790 Sundry Act, S-U-N-D-R-Y Act, right, 1790, it allowed Moors not to be treated as slaves, and some took the last name Freeman as well. Where Trump is saying uh, he picked her out because, look, your name is Ruby Freeman. Uh, I can pick you out and say, hey, uh, you... Uh, are responsible for, uh, and, and, which is lies though, but you are responsible for uh, fraudulent activities within this uh, voter system and your name is Freeman. So if you admit to that, we'll make sure you not you don't go to jail and we also might give you a stipend or something, right? It didn't work, you didn't go for it. Now, Matt Shuham, today at 1.30 p.m., this is what he wrote. He said, President Donald Trump attempt to pressure Georgia's top elections official and to stealing the state for him also served as a helpful illustration of the sort of disinformation that the president regularly consumes and creates. Look no further than Trump's accession with Ruby Freeman, who was a private individual until a few weeks ago. When fever swamp conspiracy mongers decided they would target her with the false claim that she had illegally swung the Georgia election for Joe Biden. Trump's obsession with Freeman is evident. He referenced her by name a dozen times at three separate points during his long uh, call with Georgia Secretary of State Brad Reffensperger. Trump referred to Freeman as a professional vote scammer. And hustler, right? Look, 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 look. Because you know when they when they deal with us, black people, they they throw around the terms hustler, scammer, slick, rogue, thug, incompetent, uh, uh, not validated. You know the meaning terms, right? To try to drive a point home to get other whites to say, yeah, cheer him on. Yeah, that those are the attributes of how we see black people. And that's why I'm telling you all in 2021, it's dead. It's it's not working anymore. It's, it's over. But it's funny to watch the attempt, though, you know, because it, it puts the stamp, the seal that it's actually over. But let's keep going, right? Uh, he called her a hustler. All right. Uh, wait. Wait. A scammer and hustler, and later as a known political operative, balladeer, right? Trump also singled out Freeman's lovely daughter, right? A very lovely young lady, I'm sure. The president said before nothing that he was willing to take on Freeman, right? Now, this is an individual who just worked at the thing and he picked her out, right? Black lady. You're going to be the target because you got to put a face to the claim. It's a game. Right? Even though I bet she got death threats. I bet her life is not the same. You know, but who cares of the damage as long as the point is driven home? How does Trump know, as he explained, they watched it certified in slow motion, instant replay, if you can believe it. And it was magnified many times over and the minimum it was was eighteen thousand ballots all for Biden. 
You know the internet, he added, talking about Trump, separately. You know what was trending on the internet. Where's Ruby? Because they thought she would be in jail. Where's Ruby? It's crazy. It is crazy, but despite Trump's assertion, Friedman wasn't trending on the web at the time of his call. She was only trending in the echo chamber of disinformation that Trump has inhabited for years. Friedman entered the conspiracy theory lexicon in early December when videos started circling of a ballot processing center at Atlanta State Farm Arena. Trump attorney Rudy Giuliani showed selectively edited footage from the video to Georgia's legislator. On December 3rd, Fox News' Sean Hannity invited Giuliani on that night to discuss the footage, calling it a bombshell. The campaign promoted the footage on Twitter the same day, featuring a voiceover from the attorney, volunteer Republican donor, Jackie Pick, who falsely claimed that it showed elections workers committing voter fraud. Wow. The video does not show fraud as reference Spurger, R-A-F-F-E-N-S-P-E-R-G-R, told Trump. His office walked WSB TV frame by frame through the video on December 4th, demonstrating that it showed the normal ballot counting process. The president's team is intentionally misleading the public about what happened at State Farm Arena on election night. Georgia election official Gabrielle Sterling said at the time, right? Now, let me tell you what's going on. Let me tell you what's going on. Right. This is an old trick. Even it even goes back to Nixon. I'm proving in a minute. The trick is you pick somebody out the crowd who you deem is incompetent or you feel like they can't stand their ground, right? And then you lay all of the, the blame and burden at their feet and then you put a face to all your falsities and say, Hey, this is the person that's committing an act of uh, injustice or fraudulent activity, right? You pick out a, a black person, right? And then that way you would get more whites who will go along with the negative stereotypes that's been uh, created, the narrative that was created by racist whites in the media. That's why it's important for them to only give black people certain type of roles in the movies because in a lot of these communities, uh, some white people don't never see or grow up with black people unless when they get old, unless they go in the military or they go off to college or something, then they have encounters with black people. But their whole perception of black people comes from media and then the roles that they give blacks in the media uh, written by white directors are one either of someone being slick or stealing something or a gang member or the butler or the nanny. Or they'll stick a man in the dress. And that's, and that's that's what you have, right? They done this on purpose, right? Y'all think I'm just making this up, right? Check this out. Now, this is from the Washington Post, right? Now, this goes back to when Nixon was president, right? When he was president. And I want you to hear how they view minority. That's why when they say the black and the brown. Because they created a stereotype for the black and the brown. And white people carry it out. Although you got brown people who want to be white, and you got black people who want to actually, literally, who wants to be white. But the frustration is, is when white people see them and won't let them in. So they got to go front to their own race, the black race, brown race, and try to act like they better than or other than their own people, and it drives them schizo, right? Now, check this out. Now, this is Nixon. Blacks have highest priority, right? Let me read that again. This is Nixon. Blacks have highest priority, followed by Mexican-Americans, and then by ethnics, ethnics. Like ethnic groups. Well, who is the ethnics? Right? That um, he's talking about. Right? Competent women 
who can compete with men should be placed in selected positions, especially in those with symbolic value, right? But I want to read this again, right? This is coming from the Nixon's White House, right? And uh, Malik did the writing. Let me read it again. Blacks have highest priority, followed by Mexican Americans, and then by ethnics, Malik wrote. Competent women who can compete with men should be placed in selected positions, especially in those with symbolic value. This, then this is about the Nixon tapes. The tapes showed what Nixon really thought. After saying he doubted women were worth the effort, he voiced his skepticism about black appointees in even harsher terms, right? Because this this has always been a plan and a plot. I'll show you how they do it, right? We're gonna keep on reading. With blacks, the president said, this is Nixon. With blacks, the president said, from the Nixon tapes, you can usually settle for an incompetent. Because there are just not enough competent ones. And so you put incompetence in and get along with them, right? It's strategy. You pick somebody out who they deem was incompetent. You put them in the position of power, right? Yeah, you put incompetence in and get along with them. Because the symbolism is vitally important. You have to show you care. Symbolism, but right? symbolism, that's the trick. They saying the trick is you put an incompetent black in a position of power, you know, so you, you have to show that you care, right? Then when something goes awry like it did with Ruby Freeman, uh, then they didn't get their way, then they then they dumped the blame and said, Well you did this, you did that, and they expect the other whites or the other members of the party to toe the line and go along with them. But what happened was it didn't happen, and Trump was stuck out on a limb. He's like, come on, you know, hey, come on. Y'all got to side with me. Y'all got to um, follow my lead. You know, it's us against them. And they trying to tell Trump, Trump, man, them days are gone, man. What are you doing, man? You, the, the racist cops. Uh, racism and white nationalism and white supremacists, it's, it's gone. It's a thing of the past. We washed our hands with it. We moving on to a new future. And he can't believe it, right? I'm going to read that paragraph again. With blacks, the president said, this time about President Nixon, you can usually settle for an incompetent because there are just not enough competent ones. And so you put incompetence in and get along with them because the symbolism is vitally important. You have to show you care. Symbolism is important. They have to show that we care, even if they don't care. But they got to show that we care for the symbolism to, to reach out to the American people. Later, after expressing his low expectations for Mexicans, Nixon added, that's the problem. Finding a Mexican that is honest. And Italians have somewhat the same problem. See, this is Nixon. Well, why is he on Italians? Because he know that the Italians are mixed with black too, doing the, the, the conquering of the Moors. They know the game. As a matter of fact, everybody know the game. We just, we just want to play out roles that was given to us through the eyes of the media. And everybody said, well, I'm going to be this person. I'm gonna be. But they already created them roles and people want to carry it out. And yeah, how it's working so far. Nixon's anger at his cabinet and his staff was triggered the next month after he delivered a national televised address in which he said he was stepping up American troop withdrawals from Vietnam and that he intended to end American involvement in the war. Not meanly but nobly, in a way that would give the South Vietnamese a realistic hope of freedom. The president regarded the speech as one of his best and was miffed because too few of his advisors were calling were calling with congratulations. See, that's Trump, right? 
he want admiration all the time, right? Screw the cabinet and the rest. Nixon exploded in a telephone conversation with Henry Kissinger as Trump is exploding on his own Republican Party. Henry Kissinger, his national secretary, ad- advisor, and one of the few to offer praise. Because there's always be one that's going to stick around. No more sucking around. From now on, they come to me. I'm sick of the whole bunch, right? The others are a bunch of goddamn cowards. The staff, except for uh, Holdman and John Erk Lynchman, E-H-R-L-I-C-H-M-A-N. Screw them. The cabinet, except for Treasury Secretary John B. Connolly. The hell with them. Toward the end of the conversation, the president still fed up, hinted he might even decide to change course and get tough with North Vietnam. I'll turn right so goddamn hard, it'll make your head spin, he told Kissinger. We'll bomb the bastards off the earth. And that's what happens when you get an egomaniac in office as a president. He wants full attention. He wants full submission. And if things don't go his way, they begin to get unraveled. They take drastic measures and they become unhinged. And you can't predict the next move. And it gets chaotic. And then the leadership is one of confusion. And so we're witnessing that. He didn't win. He damn near was begging the dude to overturn the election for him. It didn't happen. His supporters are upset because they they want to toe the line of the old mind, racist mindset that was given to them by racist directors of the media who created these racist movies and shows to try to create a negative narrative towards black people. But now that it's run its course and it's over with and it has no more fight, they confuse and don't know what to do. So last ditch effort was Trump is the savior to keep uh, racism and white supremacy alive and we are going to get behind Trump. But fail to realize racism, white supremacy was through before Trump got in office. All they did was just expose themselves for who they are. And time and the clock was out. And the, the seconds had already ticked off the clock. And so now it's like you expose yourself. Now you're sitting in the middle of the street and everybody looking at you. And now you're even getting more mad because you think people are mocking you. So your feelings hurt. You're stuck in your ego and you're ready to lash out. And cooler heads are sitting there telling you, look, you come to D.C. with that nonsense and start tearing up black churches or whatever, we locking you up this time. But they don't think that, they're not taking the people serious, but they feel to realize it, they gave, they tolerated certain activities up until 2020, right? Hoping people would reverse course naturally on their own before they step in and reverse the course for you. But it didn't work, so now the people in position saying, hey, maybe you all have to be shown instead of told, right? And so they saying, hey, you come down here with this nonsense, we got something for you. Try me if you like. And they're going to get tried. And we'll see January the 6th, 2021, it's going to be a crazy day. But I hope you all uh, enjoyed the show. Shout out to High Frequency, FlexNet TV, Atom Productions, uh, Verbal Pick Radio, VCM Films, Everyday People, uh, The Movie Part 2, or EDP 2, coming soon. Uh, what's up, Cisco? Now, and then y'all make sure y'all go on YouTube, which is Verbal Pick Radio YouTube, and check out uh, the interview I did with Cisco on uh, pertaining to. Uh, being uh, a child of uh, mixed race uh, parents, um, mother was white, father was black. Very interesting interview. 
Make sure y'all check that out. And stay tuned right here on Verbal Pick Radio. We're out.